Hi, this is your math professor, Barbara Rademacher, and we're about to do function operations. Operations you're already familiar with, which is addition and subtraction. This symbol right here means that we're being told to add these two functions, and this symbol right here means that we're going to be subtracting g from f, or we're going to say f of x minus g of x. Okay, so let's do that. If f of x equals 9x minus 15 and g of x equals 3x plus 10 and we add the two functions f plus g of x then all I'm going to do is say 9x minus 15 plus 3x plus 10. I'm going to add my like terms, 12x minus 5. Let's see if that's right. Yay for me. All right, now we're going to subtract. And if you remember from beginning algebra, subtraction is just a tad more dangerous. Yes, indeed. We'll say the first function, which is 9x minus 15. But when we subtract the second function, we have to put it in parentheses, 3x plus 10 because we have more than two more than one term here we have two terms and if i don't use parentheses i'll make a sign error okay i have to be sure to distribute the negative sign negative times 3x is negative 3x negative times positive 10 is negative 10 now i add my like terms together 9x minus 3x is 6x, and negative 15 minus 10 is negative 25. Remember, you can slow down this tape. You can pause it. You can, it's not a tape, is it? It's a digital recording. 6x, I have to stop calling these things tapes. That's what people my age do. We call them tapes. No. All right. What did I do wrong? 9x minus 3x is 6x. And, oh, 25. Sneaky thing. All right, 25. There we go. Ha! Ah, piece of cake. Okay. Now. Aha, this is what I was waiting for. We have two functions. We're going to add them. But now instead of x, we have a negative 5. Let's take a look at this. We've got g of x equals 4x and h of x equals x minus 1. I'm supposed to find g plus h of negative 5. A sneaky thing I can do is take g of negative 5 and h of negative 5, find out what those are, and then add those. Notice I put negative 5 in for the x's. 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. And negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6. And if we add negative 20 and negative 6, we'll get negative 26. Let's see if that's the right answer. Woo! OK. Those are always easy when you have a number in there.
Let's look at 21. fg of x. That means we're going to multiply f of x and g of x. So if, ooh, I'm getting way down there, aren't I? If f of x is 7x and g of x is 2x minus 8, and I'm being told to multiply them f of g, oh, uh, 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 uh. It's f times g of x. Okay, then what I'm going to do is multiply 7x times 2x minus 8, and that's going to be 14x squared minus 56 x. All right, let's see if that's right. 14x square. Now I have to use the, the right arrow key to come down again. Okay, 14x squared, what is my answer? Minus 56, minus 56 x. Ah, I do so hate it when these things start telling me I'm wrong. I bet you do too. Aha, here's one with a number. Let's look at this, only I'm going to turn the page. Okay, this problem says that f of x is x squared minus 2 and g of x is 4x and we're being asked to multiply f times g of and, and find it for 6, for x equals 6. So we can find f of 6 and we can find g of 6 and then multiply them. So this is going to be 6 squared minus 2, which is 36 minus 2, which is 34. I think I'm going to wish I had my calculator. This is going to be 4 times 6, which is 24, and then we're going to multiply. Oh, good grief. Okay, I can do this. Just like in the old days, right, in elementary school. 4 times 4 is 16, carry the 1. 4 t times 3 is 12, plus 1 is 13. 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 3 is 6. We're going to do 6. 11, 8, I'm going to guess the answer is 8, 16, let's see, 816. I hope, I hope, woo, that's always a good feeling. Okay, now friends, number 28, division f divided by g of x. That means we're going to take f of x and divide it by g of x. But since g of x has two terms, we're going to have to do long polynomial division. Remember that from beginning algebra? Everybody hates it. But You'll do it again in college algebra, so you might as well enjoy it now. 5x squared plus 48x plus 64. Okay, so x into 5x squared goes 5x times 5x times x is 5x squared 
and 5x times 8 is plus 40x. And everything would be great if we didn't have to draw the line and change the signs. So that 48x minus 40x is 8x. Meanwhile, these guys zero out. Bring down my plus 64. x into 8x goes plus 8 times. 8 times x is 8x. 8 times 8 is 64 positive. Draw the line. Change the sign. Zero remainder. So f of x divided by g of x is going to equal 5x plus 8. Let's see. 5x plus 8. Oof, I'm glad I got that right. All right, let's check 29. This is one of the easy ones, I hope, OK? Because here we get to use a number. So we are going to divide f of x by g of x, but instead we're going to divide f of 3 by g of 3, and that ought to be considerably easier. Let's see, I've got room, I hope. I hope. I think I'll move up. f of 3 is going to be 3 squared minus 6, which is 9, minus 6, which is 3. And g of 3 is going to be 4 times 3, which is 12. And now we're going to divide f of 3 over g of 3, and that's going to be 3 over 12, which will be 1 fourth. Now notice your blue answer. If you're tempted to give the answer 0.25 because you did this on your calculator and your calculator said 0.25, read the blue. The blue says simplify your answer, type an integer or a fraction, no decimals. So if you've gotten a decimal in your uh, calculator, push math frac. But anyway, the answer is going to be 1 fourth. I'm going to go over here to the fraction tool, and I'll put a 1 on the top and a 4 on the bottom, and I'll check the answer. Good work. We're done. We're done with homework four. Enjoy.